I know Trevor Lawrence is the priority, but renewed offensive line will provide the Jaguars with some specific things that need to be pointed out. And also, they still have not talked to Josh Allen. I'll tell you about that foolishness in just a second. You are Locked On Jaguars, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What up, everybody? Thank you for joining me, Tony Wiggins, the host of the Locked On Jaguars podcast, where it's your team every day. And we thank you for making us your first listen. We are also free to subscribe to on our YouTube page. Make sure you go to Locked on Jaguars YouTube page, hit the subscribe, the like button, and then hit the bell so you receive notifications each and every time we drop an episode and wherever you listen to your podcast in the car or at work. From an audio perspective, make sure you tap into that location every single day so you do not miss an episode of Locked On Jaguars. Today's episode is sponsored by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free terms and conditions. Apply. Shout out to the everydayers that join me every single day, and you can be an everydayer too if you join me every single day. Special shout out to an everydayer. Named Keith. That's right. My man came and saw me at the barbershop and I told him anytime you walked up to me, I said, man, how did you hear about me? Was it on Twitter? He says, no, man, I'm an everydayer. That will automatically get your name mentioned if you say I'm an everydayer. In fact, it might lead to me making some plans to invite all of my everydayers out to a location and I'll buy you a beverage. One beverage, 50 straws, and you all drink out of the same beverage. No, I'm just kidding. That's an old Richard Pryor But yeah, man. I always get really, really excited about listening to uh, meeting every day. The reason why is because I don't have to constantly explain myself as if you're not an every day. All right. You know how I'm yoked. You know how I move. You understand every single thing about me. Somebody accused me of being a Trent bulky apologist the other day. And I just kind of looked at him like shame, shame, shame. You don't really watch my podcast very often, do you? Um, all of the talk about offensive line help. It is valid. They need offensive line help. I've even been the one talking about it. And, you know, on the surface, this is because you can't beat what you can't block, right? You have to be able to knock people on their you-know-what at certain critical junctures of the game. They have to know that you can do that as well because if they don't believe you can do it, it'll be like that movie. We don't believe you. We need to see more. You know, you need more people. I, I, I don't, Come on out and play. Show me. And the Jaguars – no damn well they can't do it, which is why you see the horizontal passing game. You don't see Trevor Lawrence doing all of these things. So to that point, a lot of people that take up for Trevor Lawrence and think that I'm too hard on him, somebody told me that I just, I'm just not that high on Trevor. That could not be further from the truth. The thing is, is when I make my comments about Trevor Lawrence, I include the fact when I compare him to other players, I include the fact in my thought process that every quarterback makes dumb plays every now and then. I include the fact that there are drop balls. I include the fact that the offensive line can't block my grandmother and her two sisters. I also include the fact that um, what, what, what ticks me off a little bit is, oh, so you honestly think I was making that point without factoring that in? Of course I, I, I don't. But I watch the games too. I watch the games too. And you know what? Can you be affected by the offensive line play? An attitude an attitude that they can do whatever they want to, whenever they want to do it. And even if it doesn't work, they can turn around and bust you in the face. Brute force. At the end of the day, you can throw whatever you think about press Taylor out of the window. And it ain't funny. The people that want to give Trevor Lawrence a pass because of all of the shortcomings in personnel don't want to give press Taylor the same pass because of the shortcomings in personnel. It absolutely blows my mind. And this ain't even about me taking up for Press Taylor. I cover the team. I cannot definitively tell you that they would have been better without him. And I question anybody that believes that they would be better without him. I'm not saying that they wouldn't be better without him. I'm just saying 
Anybody else in that same situation with Doug Peterson as the head coach might look exactly like that. Anybody in that same situation might look just like that with that offensive line and some of those injuries and some of those drops y'all are talking about and all of this other stuff that everybody brings up. My Trevor Lawrence opinion is not viewed in, from, from my perspective as reverse chronological. I'm not looking back and recapping anything. I'm telling you how I feel along the way the whole time while I'm looking for excellence, while I'm arguing with future Hall of Famers about how good he is. This is stuff that he keeps doing. It just keeps chipping away at me, right? So since we want to blame everybody else, I'm going to give everybody credit. I think the offensive line would absolutely change all of that stuff. Not all of it, but a lot of it improved offensive line, which is why I have been begging for it for two years. And see, that's the thing. We look at comments in a vacuum, but we don't. An everydayer understands that for two years, while everybody else was talking about big receivers and catch radiuses and edge rushers, I have been sitting on this podcast begging for more dominant play from an offensive line because I understand exactly what that does to another team. I understand what it does to the psyche of your team. Imagine if, just think about this, third and one. The Eagles always know on third or fourth and one that they're going to convert with the, the, the tush push. I think they had a situation where they didn't one time this year, but for the most part, they consider that automatic. Everybody else does too, including the defense. You don't want them to get in that situation because you know exactly what they're going to do. And they're going to keep you on the field all day. Every time they do it, they're going to keep you on the field all day. You're like, they got another first down. Oh, Lord, just don't let them get to fourth and one. On third and six, let them convert it. We don't want to do fourth and one. Because that touch push, that particular play, is like a body punch and it wears down that defense. And it kind of smacks them in the face and says, you can't do nothing about it. And that creates an atmosphere. Now, Philly has other issues. I don't want to talk about them. But it creates an atmosphere. It creates an aura of a bully. So that's the thing. Responding to me without being an everydayer will kind of make you seem like you know exactly what you're talking about. Here's the thing. The shows are here. Whether it's on YouTube or any other audio platform, just go back and listen to what I said in the offseason last year and the year before that and the year before. I said the offensive line, and I was told that they were okay. And now it's funny to have people peacocking and strutting around as if I didn't say it because I'm talking about something else. It's amazing. It is absolutely amazing. They need to score more touchdowns in the red zone. They need to more, score more touchdowns in the red zone. Yeah. That's what's going to help, you know, because scoring those extra points and converting like that, it hides a lot of your warts and every team has warts. Every team does. The Chiefs don't really have a game breaker at wide receiver. And they got a penalty, they got a lot of penalties from their tackles. Doesn't matter though, they're going to the Super Bowl, they're going to be favored. You know why? Because they're superlative in other areas, including quarterback position, that hides a lot of their warts. But here in Jacksonville, all we want to do is constantly make excuses and then use the things that are obvious about the team as a reason to excuse other things that the team needs to improve on. Not on my watch, not on here. No matter how much people want to aggravate me and think they're going to, no, you're not going to get me off of being uh, genuine. I'm not going to be disingenuous because it makes people feel comfortable. In fact, if you're around people that don't do that, leave them alone. I'm dead serious. Leave them alone. You want people to tell you the truth from my perspective. And I'll take disagreement, but I won't take it if all you are is a fanboy that with pom-poms that wants to see everything. I don't care about that. that. To a certain extent, I do. I want y'all to be happy. I can't make you happy by lying to you. I can't let my fandom and the fact that uh, I told people a long time ago, I do this because I love Jacksonville, Florida, and I love the fans. And I want what's best for the people of this city. And I want what's best for Jacksonville. If the Jaguars win the Super Bowl, I won't be looking at them. I'll be looking at around at all those happy people that for the last 28 years have bought tickets. And I'll say, you finally got something to be proud of. All of the suffering. That's what you have to be proud of. 
I don't want to mislead you so we can be happy for no reason, holding hands in misery and lying to you every single day just because of what I want to see as opposed to what we need to see. The identity, the word that Trent Barkey mentioned a lot, the way that changes, you can't change it unless you change it. And what I mean is you can want to change it, but want to ain't got nothing to do with this. This is about whether you are capable of doing it or not personnel wise and mentality wise. And it has to change. And the only way people are going to believe you, especially your opponents, because that's what matters the most. The only way they're going to believe you, you got to do it. Not just once. You got to keep doing it. You got to consistently punch them in the face and be a team that's hard to deal with and hard to play. It's the only way you change that. Unfortunately, this ain't something that you can fake. And that's why I don't fake that's why I don't fake what I feel, because it's not something that you can fake. You have to actually do it. It ain't got nothing to do with my optimism. It ain't got nothing to do with fandom. It ain't got nothing to do with that. It's got something to do with the fact that the first rule of football is you got to be physical, and they might be the least most physical team in the NFL, and y'all can sit there and talk about that other stuff all you want to, and that can be true along with the fact that your quarterback makes some boneheaded mistakes sometimes. And more importantly, it's the things that he doesn't do that's right there. Like on third and three, a dude sitting right there wide open while you throw the ball double, double coverage 18 yards down the field. That kind of stuff is silly. You're already suffering. Don't make it worse. You're supposed to be able to lift the team up and make it better. And that's the point that I'm trying to make. There's a certain excellence that you have to recognize. And more importantly, there's a lack of excellence that you have to admit that you don't see and recognize that is missing. That's just it. I'm going to tell you more about this, and I'm going to tell you something else that's missing, right? Josh Allen at the Pro Bowl talked to Jamal St. Cyr, front of one of the local TV uh, personalities here and a friend of mine. Josh said they ain't talked to him. It's been 26 days, and he ain't still heard nothing else. I got a theory, and it's a little bit more than a theory, and unless you know, you don't know. In segment three, I'm going to tell you why they're going to mess around and find out real quickly when you don't pay guys that deserve money the only thing worse is paying guys that that when, when you don't pay guys deserve money there's only thing the one thing that's slightly worse and that is paying guys that don't deserve it i'm gonna tell you about all of that stuff here in just a second on locked on jaguars today's show is brought to you and sponsored by nissan that's right man nissan is the truth are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. The 2024 Nissan Rogue is perfect for city drives, great escapes, class exclusive Google built in. A Google built in is your always updating assistant to call for almost anything. Gone are the days of connecting to your phone, Google Assistant, Google Maps, Google Play. They're built right into the 12.3 HD touchscreen infotainment system and then you have the armada the big boy the 2024 armada will change what you expect from a full-size suv picture a rugged four by four that can seat up to eight in first class luxury and style tow bigger explore further in the 2024 armada take the nissan rogue nissan pathfinder or nissan armada and go find your next adventure shop nissanusa.com And I would also like to let you know that today's show is sponsored by me, Tony Wiggins, the dude that's trying to be my boy Rick Valu calls himself the truth teller. I'm trying to be a little bit of a truth teller and give you guys some information. One thing that is the truth is locked on sports today, and you can find out just how much of the truth it is. All you got to do is first recognize the fact that locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on youtube locked on sports today is here for you 24 7 covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of locked on plus our national shows covering every league go to locked on sports today on youtube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel so i'm talking about attitude talking about all of these things that matter and then you go well these things are obvious why aren't we doing them 
That's what I've been trying to wonder. How come y'all let a dude come up here and sit and tell y'all that we ain't physical and we, we need to get bigger and stronger and he's been in charge for three years? Do you know what that looks like? That's like a person saying, this house is nasty. We need to clean it. But you're the only one that lived there and been walking around here. You ain't took a bath. You ain't done nothing. You ain't washed no dishes and you got rats and roaches. But, oh, we need to clean it up when it's your job to do it. And he sits right in your face and you go, yeah, you're right. Okay. At least you admit it. No, clean up, go take a bath. What are you talking about? See, this is the kind of stuff, this is why I say somebody's playing in your face and they're hiding in plain sight because folks want to argue with each other. They want to argue with me. You want to argue with every single person, but yet and still, the thing about it is, the guy you need to be mad at, and some of you are angry, but you don't need to let them off the hook. And I know I told y'all this. I said, we ain't gonna keep talking about that because. It is done. They have decided that Trent Balky is going to be here. He's going to be the GM. So we need to do what we can and hope and pray that they get it right. And then something happens today that made me actually change my entire podcast because I heard it about an hour ago. My man Jamal since is down at the Pro Bowl, talks to Josh Allen, sticks to Mike in his face, Josh smiles. Uh, first of all, two, a couple of weeks back when Trent Baalke talked to the media, which he was late talking to the media, okay, everybody else had already talked to the media, all the GMs, he talked to the media in the end of uh, season press conference later than everybody else and said, we haven't talked to Josh, but Josh is going to be here. He's going to be a Jaguar. But we ain't talked to him yet. We haven't started. So time went by. People were like, you ain't talked to him yet? Yet? Nothing? Y'all haven't said anything? You heard me. Still, still ain't talked to him yet. Josh says, we got to talk and has a smile on his face. We got to talk. We ain't talked yet. What in the hell are you doing? In segment three, I'm going to tell you, and we ain't got there yet, but I'm going to just warn you right now. I have F-A-A-F-O. That means blank around and find out, right? So we, this is a family show, but you know what I mean. Mess around and find out, but I ain't saying mess. You don't pay him. You string him along if you want to. Now, that's what I'm talking about segment three, but let's get back into segment two. That's your boy. As much as I want to let him off the hook, I can't. Why ain't you reached out to those people yet? Why haven't you started talking about the parameters of the deal? Maybe off the record, and I say that with a wink, wink, Trent Baalke knows he has to pay Josh Allen, and he thinks Josh Allen is the number two edge. He doesn't think he's number one. They can tell you right now that I'm not telling the truth. This ain't something that uh, a handful of people don't know. It's not. You treat him like that. Folks were guessing, but you treat him like that. You treat him like he's the number one or like he's the number two. And there's some people that are so old school, they're afraid to pay somebody who they think is a number two like a number one. And the reason why, because they believe if you pay a number two like a number one, when the number one really comes along, you ain't going to have a slot to pay him because of the allocation of funds. That's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. You know what you do when a guy is as good as him? You either have to use the bathroom or get off the pot. If you don't think he's the number one, trade him and get some compensation for him. That's what I told y'all last year. So when I was sitting here screaming for them to trade Josh Allen, I wasn't doing it because I didn't think he was as good as some of y'all do. And I probably didn't at that time. But I, what I will say is this, no matter what you think, and this goes to my thoughts about Trevor Lawrence. I thought Trevor Lawrence was the greatest thing smoking. When he doesn't play that way, I can't continue to sit here and say that. Just like that, I'm telling you that when Josh Allen outplays what I think he's capable of, you got to give him credit. And more importantly, you got to give him his money. It's common sense. So everybody thinks I'm hating. What I'm not doing is hating. What I'm rewarding is demonstrated performance. The two words everyone who listens to this podcast has consistently heard me talk about. If you don't pay a guy until he actually does what you think he's worth, then that's when you pay him. But you can't come back and, and watch him do what he does and still sit there and not pay him because no matter what you saw, you still don't believe that he's that. If I wanted to leave these people alone and let them do their job, but if any, it, 
tell me right now. We can talk about Jalen Ramsey, which we don't need to. Talk about Yannick Ngakwe. This is why those guys were screaming for the owner or Tony. <laughs> it was a waste of time right there, by the way. But this is why they were doing that. Hey, man, look, I did everything y'all asked me to do and more. You going to let these people not pay me no money? You going to let that happen? I'll give you something that's the ponder. Do y'all remember when Jalen said, they told me they're not giving me an extension? This is why I tell you to get your head out of the sand. They ain't giving me no extension. They said they're not extending me this year. So, hey, he showed with a Brinks truck. They said they're not extending me. A couple of weeks go by, the thing, whatever happens, they go through training camp. The thing happens in week two in Houston. Jay said, well, my back hurt. Shad stands there and says, y'all remember this. He said, I'll make him the highest paid Jaguar and I'll make him the highest paid corner in the league. If he wants to stay here, he can stay here. I'll make him. Wait a minute. Why didn't you tell them to pay him when he showed up that summer? If now all of a sudden you're going to be willing to change, I'll make him. Not what are you talking about? Y'all letting these people play with you. And I'm telling you the reason why these guys are calling the owners, because you got to get past the guy like Trent. You got to go around Caldwell. You got to go around Coughlin because the Jaguars are owned by the cons and they will be here. Mainly shy. You're going to be the one that be here. The fans will be. Tell me not one. of Every one of y'all thought that those guys should get paid. And they didn't. And now they're doing the same thing to a dude. They never called you out. He never said a bad word about you. He represents him and his family so well, and he put up monster numbers and should have been a first-team All-Pro this year. At some point, he shouldn't sit around and not hear from you. He shouldn't be sitting around not hearing from you. You should. You, you, your face should be on his doormat in front of his house. You sitting around acting like y'all the Patriots or the Chiefs. Yeah, I know a whole bunch of great players come through here. You're gonna sit there and let that man not get paid. Whew. And, and then y'all will take up for these people and be mad at me. No, you need to be mad at them because they're the ones that's costing you misery by the way they treat people. Mess around and find out. And this is what I mean. And I'm gonna talk about this in segment three. Don't pay him. You don't think those other people on the team noticed that? Y'all worried about Trevor Lawrence asking for a trade? Don't pay Josh Allen and see what happens. You worried about other guys on this team? Oh, and they probably ain't going to extend ETN either because he's a running back. You see what I'm talking about? All these dudes y'all love will be out of here in a year because of the ego of the man running this operation over here. And y'all need to stop it and start paying attention. Mess around and find out. I'll tell you in just a second exactly what I mean by that. I already kind of gave you a hint, but you're going to get some more of it here in segment three on Locked on Jaguar. Got to let you know about today's sponsor, which is LinkedIn. That's right. I call them LinkedIn Talent Solutions because they are the solution to a lot of talent issues. How about that? But LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. It's the start of the new year, man. If you're thinking about ways that you can change your business in 2024, look no further than LinkedIn. They helped me tremendously. I would not have been able to be as successful as I was in my other career had I not used LinkedIn. And you can do the same thing. So post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. And I got to let you know about DoorDash, man. Moved to a new neighborhood and folks act like they couldn't find me because we weren't on the maps and the apps already, right? Guess who didn't have that problem? DoorDash. And guess what I had to do? I had to use places that use DoorDash. And guess what? That's a whole bunch, including a lot of restaurants and a lot of mom and pop stores that actually sometimes sell the best food and better food than chain stores. Eat from where you like, but guess what? Only use DoorDash if you want to get it where you are and it's still hot and the drivers are very, very courteous. I'm telling you, man, get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order. When you download the DoorDash app and enter the code LOCKED23. 
It's subject to change now in terms of supply, but I'll repeat it for you again. You're going to get 50% off up to $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order when you download the DoorDash app and enter the lock code, the, the, the promo code LOCKED23. Man, I got so excited thinking about DoorDash bringing me food. I almost forgot what the hell I was talking about. But I remember now talking about the Jaguars. Mess around and find out. Folks said that this is going to be a destination place because of Trevor Lawrence. Okay. You still got to pay him. You still got to pay him. Leonard Floyd, veteran edge rusher, true professional. He sounded off and he sounded like most of these dudes sound like when they get to the point where they are in their career. And Floyd has a ring already with the Rams. So, you know, what he said, Floyd said, I'm going where the money's going. There's veterans out there that's going to come play wherever the money is. If the Jaguars don't pay their own player, Josh Allen, do you honestly think they're going to pay free agents? Calais Campbell left here with a frown on his face last year. He's shaking his head like they weren't serious. That comes from a reliable source that I have. He had a cup of coffee with Clowney last year. I can get it. He wanted to be a starter. He started on a team that was expected to win the Super Bowl. He made way more money. And that would have meant that Joshua Trayvon wasn't going to play or you would have to change your whole defense. So I get all of that. But two things can be true. Clowney, for logistical reasons and practical reasons, wasn't a good fit. But you also lowballed some guys that were. When you didn't have Trayvon, a rumor that I heard was that uh, Matt Judon wanted to, you know, he was, hey, he was all happy about coming here until they lowballed him. Who don't want to go to Florida and you'd rather go to New England and be cold and not have fun because you're doing it the Patriot way? I don't get it. I don't get it. And one of the things that I keep telling people when they tell me, well, it doesn't matter what they do because Balky's still making the pick. I said, hey, man, look, we got to be optimistic. We got to hope that he's like a broke clock. He's right twice a day, all right? He's done all right in the first round. He's done good. I like Trayvon and I like Anton Harrison. I really like both of those players. It's after that. See, the first round is something, is a two-word uh, two-word phrase that people in the industry use. And trust me, they use it on me all the time because I talk to folks that have either coached, GM'd, um, been scouts, still are scouts, some of them are in contact with scouts because around this time you ain't getting none of those dudes on the phone because one, it's all operational security, it's OPSEC, they ain't telling you nothing. But two, you have to talk to them from a personal level before this point. They ain't even answering the phone right now. If they do, they say, can I hit you back? Because everybody's evaling. That's why I miss going to Mobile because I could have ran in at least 15 dudes that I have a relationship with that's on that side of the house. One thing that they'll always tell you about first round pick, that's easy scouting. You bring up a dude that's in the top 50 and talk to one of these guys. And when I listen to shows and read tweets from guys that do what we do in this industry, I can tell who has never talked to anybody that does that for a living because they always say easy scouting. When you see me post players, you know, I'm posting, I'm posting guys that, a friend's top 50 guys maybe even will spill into day three and then they go work out and now they end up first round picks. So now it looks like I did easy scouting, but I did it before everybody else did. Thank you, Quinion Mitchell. I told you all about a month ago about him. I did. I mean, I keep mentioning these dudes. Uh, Stevens, the, the center out of UConn, the guard center out of UConn. Told you all about that too. The tweets are right there for you. You know why I do that? Because I talk to people that'll tell me, I said two weeks ago, the little bird told me that right tackles, they're going to be run on right tackles and you sitting at 17. You might not get none of those dudes because all of a sudden you look at Daniel Jeremiah's board compared to his board from a month ago. And guess what? You see a whole bunch of right tackles gone either on or before pick 17. What I tell you, because I'm not just doing this because of what I think or what I hope happens. I'm doing this for what people do that job who do that job for a living. Tell me. They're going to mess around and find out when people find out that they ain't paying folks 
And the rumor goes around, guys, man, the Jacksonville ain't, they ain't trying to win that, man. They, they trying to win, but they trying to win on a bargain. They're going to put everything on Trevor's back and hope that that's it and, and, and you know, think that they can play call their way through it. And, and See, I think Trent Baalke GMs his team as if he's trying to get credit. Damn that. You know how you get credit? Win. You know how you win? Have a team full of dudes that ain't going to shy away from physicality and they're going to punch people in the mouth and that'll make it easier on your play caller and your quarterback. Then, when things don't go right, you know it's not physicality that's the blame. You know what is the blame? Whatever it looks like the problem is. But see, me, I can decipher. I can go beyond that. I can look at, I can look at the physicality and say, yeah, that's a problem too, but uh-uh, this is a problem also. It's called walking and chewing bubble gum at the same time. Some of y'all need to try it. All right, here's the thing. Enjoy your weekend. Let it all soak in. I invite you to go look or listen to past podcasts from a year ago when I said th the, the things that I said now, and maybe you'll understand why I get so hyped when I talk about these subjects. But in the meantime, enjoy the first football-less weekend we've had in a long time as you get ready for the big game next week. See you next time here on Locked on Jaguar.